hello and welcome to our current affairs booster program of insights and this is designed to make your preparation streamlined and only to target prelims 2020 so let's start our discussion the first issue is your iconic tourist sites why it is in news because the government will develop 22 iconic tourist sites and which were previously 75 and four more announced in budget now to add to the 17 so total would be 22 in the country as a world class tourist destinations the tourism ministry is the nodal ministry for the implementation don't get confused with the cultural ministry only tourism ministry is there it is uh, the nodal ministry the 17 sites identified by the ministry are uh, first is your Taj Mahal and Fatehpur Sikri which is located in UP. Second is your Ajanta and Elora, Maharashtra and Humayun's Tomb, Red Fort and Kutub Minar which is located in Delhi. Kolbha Beach in Goa, Amir Fort in Rajasthan, Somnath and Dholavira which is located in Gujarat. Uh, Khajurao, Madhya Pradesh, then Hampi, Karnataka, Mahavalipuram located in Tamil Nadu, Kajiranga, Assam. Kumara, uh, Kumara Kom, uh, Kerala, the Mahabodhi Temple which is located in Bihar. The initiative is aimed at enhancing India's soft power. Remember that soft power is very very important when uh, we consider uh, diplomacy. And uh, why this initiative is uh, there? Because uh, uh, tourism industry is declining day by day and we don't have that kind of vibrant tourism industry if you compare this with our uh, European countries, uh, USA, Canada and also uh, South, East, uh, South Asian countries, uh, South East Asian countries especially their tourism is very good and India has a big coastline, lots of uh, things are there in India still tourism sector is declining because lots of issues are indulged, indulged like the FDI uh, which is very very necessary for tourism is getting declined and after that women safety cleanliness, cleanliness is the biggest hurdle in this tourism sector and uh, these things should be uh, taken care of and uh, there is a low momentum under adopt a heritage scheme so what is this adopt a heritage scheme guys remember that uh, it is also known as adopt a heritage apni dharohor and apni pehchan which is a collective effort between ministry of tourism ministry of culture and archaeological survey of india and also state and union uh, territory governments the project uh, that is uh, adopt a heritage uh, especially aims to develop synergy among all partners to effectively promote responsible tourism the responsible tourism is the main of this government uh, nowadays and the priority areas of uh, this program are enlisted uh, in this uh, adopt heritage scheme like developing basic tourism infrastructure which is very very important and promoting cultural and heritage value of the country to generate livelihoods in the identified regions and uh, the main important thing is your awareness generation regarding tourism and uh, creating employment through active involvement of local communities harnessing tourism potential developing sustainable tourism which is very very important and you guys uh, can remember that there is a scheme that blue flag uh, certification is there and if that kind of approach would be adopted then tourism industry can be a big boost for our economy so let's discuss the next issue that is your Rakhigari as an iconic site. Uh, in Union Budget 2022-21, it has been proposed to develop Rakhigari, which is located in Hisar district of Haryana as an iconic site. So let's identify the uh, this Rakhigari site. See, this is your Hisar district of Haryana, um, and uh, this is your Rakhigari. Uh, then other important uh, sites of this Indus Valley Civilization, you can uh, see the Mahenjodara uh, which is located in Sindh region of Pakistan, Harappa, uh, then Kalibangan which is located in uh, Rajasthan, Dholavira and Lothal are in Guj Gujarat and these sites are very very important from uh, this history questions point of view. Other four uh, uh, archaeological sites which is located in UPR Hastinapur, uh, in Assam, Sivsagar, in Gujarat, Dholavira and in Tamil Nadu, Adi Channalur and th th this will be also be developed as an iconic site with on-site museums. Let's discuss in uh, brief about uh, Rakhigari. It is the largest Harappan site in the Indian subcontinent and it is located in already we dis have discussed Hisar district of Haryana and it was excavated by Amarendra Nath of Archaeological Survey of India. 
other uh, important sites of Harappan civilization on Indian subcontinent are Harappa, Mohenjo-daro, uh, Ga uh, Ganveri Walla, uh, which is located in Pakistan, and Dholavira, which is located in Gujarat, India. Then uh, settlements, the mature Harappan phase represented by plant township having mud brick as well as burnt brick houses with a proper drainage system. So the size of this one brick was 3 is to 2 is to 1, you, okay, you, you might have read in uh, history. The other antiquities uh, are uh, which are discovered like blades, uh, terracotta and shell bungles, beads of semi-precious stones and copper objects, animal figurines, toy cart frame and wheel of terracotta, bone points, inscribed steatite uh, seals and ceilings and uh, animal sacrifice pit also are those other antiquities then a uh, recent findings in this rakhigari site we are discussing about this rakhigari uh, as an iconic site so uh, we are uh, discussing about recent findings recently a study of dna from skeletal remains excavated from the harappan cemetery at rakhigari found that the people in harappan civilization have an independent origin this study negates the theory of Harappans having a uh, st steppy pastoral or ancient uh, Iranian farmer ancestry. Then we'll discuss about uh, Harappan civilization. You all know that it is also known as Indus Valley civilization and it was flourished uh, in 2500 BC in the western part of South Asia in contemporary Pakistan and western India as well. The Indus Valley was home to the largest of the four ancient urban civilizations of Egypt mesopotamia india and china in previous year question there is a, uh, there was a mains question like that it was uh, a comparison between the civilizations of indus valley mesopotamia and egypt see this kind of questions can be asked in mains so now we are discussing about prelim point of view and after prelims we will go for the mains point of view and in that manner we will discuss the topics in the 1920s the archaeological department of india carried out excavations in the indus valley wherein the ruins of the two old cities, uh, Vidalichet, uh, Mohenjo-daro and Harappa were unearthed. Then the next issue is your Pum Puhar port. The Department of Science and Technology has launched Project Digital Pum Puhar to recreate the Chola dynasty port uh, city that is also known as Pum Puhar which is located in Tamil Nadu. So let's identify the site. Here is your Tamil Nadu and you can see this Pum Puhar port is there in Tamil Nadu and you can mark the Chennai is there, Bengaluru is there and Puducherry is there. So uh, you can, uh, I have already said that the cities are important and west to east and north to south direction in that manner you have to remember the cities. The reconstruction of Pum Puhar is a part of DST's Indian Digital Heritage Project and it is an uh, exhibition of its first project digital hampi and is currently on display on the national museum the pum puhar project is part of second phase of ids that is indian digital heritage the second phase will focus on the heritage sites that are currently underwater in gujarat uh, example the dwaraka and tamil nadu let's discuss in details about the history of pum puhar port the pum puhar is mentioned in the works of sangam tamil literature and it was re-established at the present location at the mouth of the river Kaveri around 3000 years ago. Then let's discuss about project digital Pum Puhar. The project involves underwater surveys and photography by re remotely operated vehicles and remote sensing based geodynamic studies to bring out comprehensive information on the time series evolution and extinction. Then Indian Digital Heritage Initiative, it is an initiative by DST that is Department of Science and Technology for digital documentation and interpretation of the, our tangible and intangible heritage. The project highlights art, architecture and cultural legacy of the world heritage site hum, uh, which is located in Hampi in Karnataka. Then the Chola thing is mentioned, so the, let's discuss in detail about the Cholas and Chola dynasty. The Cholas control the central and northern parts of Tamil Nadu. Their, uh, their core area of the rule was Kaveri Delta, Delta, later known as Chola Mandalam. Their capital as not Udaipur, sorry for the mistake, it is Urayur. Urayur was the capital and remember that uh, it is located near Tiruchirapalli town 
uh, which is located in Tamil Nadu and it was the capital city of the early Cholas. It is very very important who were one of the three main kingdoms of the ancient Tamil country and Uraiyur uh, was the capital. And guys remember that the inscriptions and the rock edicts of Ashoka and Satvahanas describe Uraiyur as the citadel and center of the Cholas. And remember that Uraiyur was ruled by Karikal Cholan previously. And that, uh, during that time it was flourish uh, uh, if you consider architecture, economy, polity etc. And Puhar or it is also known as Kaveri Patnam and which was an alternative royal residence and seaport town of the Cholas also. Two cities, one is your Urayur, not Udaipur, Urayur and second is your Puhar or Kaveri Patnam. Tiger was the emblem of the Cholas and they maintained an efficient navy and during Chola uh, especially the uh, navy was vibrant at that time. King Karikala was a famous king of the Sangam Cholas. Many Sangam poems mentioned the battle of Venni uh, where he defeated the confederacy of Cheras, Pandyas and 11 minor uh, chieftains. He founded the port city of Puhar which is identical with Kaveri Patnam and constructed 160 km of an embankment along with the Kaveri river. Then the next issue is your Bandipur Tiger Reserve. Why it is in use? Because a prolonged monsoon and on seasonal rains have helped to rejuvenate the water holes in Bandipur Tiger Reserve in Karnataka. What is this water holes actually? The, uh, these are the depressions uh, in which water actually collects and especially one that is regular, regularly drunk from uh, by the animals and that is also water holes especially in many tiger reserves and national parks these water holes are present. There are 370 big and small water holes or depression in which water collects from where animals usually drink uh, in Bandipur and 85% of them are full. It was this Bandipur Tiger Reserve was established in 1973 under Project Tiger and in 1985 uh, by including adjacent areas from Venugopala Wildlife Park it was enlarged and named as Bandipur National Park. Let's see the location of this Bandipur National Park and other important national parks. So see, um, see this is the region of Karnataka region and you can see uh, Nugu Wildlife Sanctuary which is located here and uh, Brahmagiri Wildlife Sanctuary, Nagarhol at the uh, Wayanad Wildlife Sanctuary, Wayanad Wildlife Sanctuary is here and here you can see Bandipur uh, Tiger Reserve is there and Mudumalai Tiger Reserve is there and Satyamangalam Tiger the, uh, uh, is there. So here is your Kabini River you can see. Uh, it is not there but uh, you have to uh, think. See Bandipur uh, Tiger Reserve is located uh, near uh, this uh, Wayanad Wildlife Sanctuary and Kabini River and Nugu Wildlife Sanctuary as well. Then uh, let's discuss in details about this. This Bandipur Tiger Reserve is uh, situated in two contiguous uh, districts uh, that is Mysore and Chamaraja Nagar of Karnataka and is located at the trijunction area of the states of Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Kerala as well. It forms as a part of Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. It is surrounded by Muddumallai Tiger Reserve in south, uh, Oenat Wildlife Sanctuary in southwest and the Kavini Reservoir separates the Bandipur and Nagarhol Tiger Reserve on the northwest. So here you can locate again. Here is your Kavini, then here is your Oenat and here is your Bandipur National Park. Then the Bandipur along with Nagarhol, Mudumalai, Satyamangalam and Oenad constitute the single largest wild population of tigers in the world. You can, you can mark here Satyamangalam, Mudumalai and Bandipur, Oenad it is there. It is a whole kind of tiger population are there. This uh, landscape comprises of 21% of the total forested area of the western Ghats and holds one eighth of the world's tiger population and to one fourth of India's tiger population. This landscape is also home to single largest Asian elephant population in the world and is part of the Mysore Elephant Reserve that is MAR. Which are the rivers uh, located near the park? The park is located between the Kavini River in the south and Moya River in the south. Sorry, Kavini River in the north and Moya in south. The Nugu River runs through the park. The highest point in the park is on a hill called Himavat 
गोपाल स्वामी बेटा देन लेट्स डिस्कस द नेक्स्ट इशू दैट इज फ्लेम थ्रोटेड बुलबुल द फ्लेम थ्रोटेड बुलबुल ऑल्सो कल द रूबी गुल्ला इट इज स्टेट बार्ड ऑफ गोवा एज वेल एंड हैज बीन चोजेन एज द मास्कट ऑफ द थर्टी सिक्स नेशनल गेम्स वट इज दिस मास्कट यू नो मास्कट इज ए पर्सनल थिंग यू नो दैट इज सपोज टू ब्रिंग गुड लक एंड स्पेशली मास्कट आर यूजली यूज इन गेम्स यू कैन सी दैट ओलम्पिक्स एंड कॉमन वेल्थ गेम्स आर देयर देयर मास्कट आर देयर एंड दिस फ्लेम थ्रोटेड बुलबुल Uh, we are discussing it is found in western ghats in india only the iucn status of this flame throated bulbul it looks like this it list concern and its head is uh, 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 gray black color and its uh, whole body is kind of your uh, yellow yellowish color and some yellowish gray you can say and after that the neck is your orange color and it is included in the schedule uh, four of Wildlife Protection Act, uh, Wildlife Protection Act, nineteen seventy two. So let's discuss in brief about this uh, schedules under Wildlife Protection Act, nineteen seventy two. Schedule one, schedule uh, schedule one, schedule three, schedule four, schedule five, schedule six are there. We'll discuss the importance. Schedule one and uh, part two of schedule two provide absolute protection of for offences under this are prescribed as the highest penalties. Species listed in Schedule Three and Schedule Four are also protected, but the penalties are much lower. Schedule Five includes the animals which may be hunted, and uh, the vermin. Uh, examples: common crow, crow, fruit bats, mice, and rats are also included in Schedule Five. The specified endemic plants uh, who are in Schedule Six that are prohibited from cultivation and planting. The next issue is your Santus portal. It is uh, launched by Ministry of Labour and Employment to monitor the implementation of labour laws at the grassroots levels. The objective of Santus portal is to promote transparency, accountability, eff 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 effective delivery of public services, and implementation of policies, schemes of Ministry of Labour and Employment at the grassroots level through constant monitoring. Entering 2020, the government aims to implement all four codes on wages, industrial relations, social security, and occupational safety, health, and working conditions. These are expected to improve ease of doing business and safeguard the interest of workers. For public grievances, centralized public grievance redressal and monitoring system that is CPGRAMS portal is already functional. then let's discuss about this centralized public grievance redressal and monitoring system it is an online web enabled system developed by your meti that is uh, minister of electronics and Te uh, Te uh, information technology and the, in under that a national informatic center is there it is uh, uh, it is the um, it is the thing which uh, enable this web based platform It is an association with director uh, directorate of public grievances and department of administrative reforms and public grievances under the minister of personnel and public grievances and pensions. It aims to receive, redress, and monitor the grievances of the public. Let's discuss the question that is preliminary question of twenty uh, nineteen. In India, the use of carbofuran, methyl parathion, porat, and triazopos. is viewed with apprehension these chemicals are used as options are pesticides in agriculture preservatives in processed foods fruit ripening agents moisturizing agents in cosmetics the right answer is option a why this kind of question are asked because in that year in hindu many times this kind of pesticides were shown that these are very dangerous pesticide because when one kind of pest attack was there one uh, pest was among that was fall army worm fall army worm was there and it is very dangerous uh, kind of pest and it looks like this uh, so this pest attack was there for uh, eradicating that the pest attack this kind of pesticides were there and ethical issues were indulged that's why it was in the hindu so reading hindu is also important the upcoming uh, question uh, prelim 2019 was that like that Consider the following: 
carbon monoxide, methane, ozone, sulfur dioxide, which of the above are released into atmosphere due to the burning of crop biomass residue. So these uh, uh, things are very very important. All are uh, correct statement. So option D is the correct answer. Apart from these chemicals, also uh, you know that ammonia is also released. After that, volatile organic compounds. Uh, these uh, these things are also uh, released. Let's solve the CSAT question, which I asked in prelim 2019. In a group of 15 people, seven can re uh, read French, eight can read English, while three of them can read neither of these two languages. The number of people who can read exactly one language is. Let's uh, solve the question. Total 15 people are there. Among them, 3 cannot read any languages, so 12 people would be there. So, French would be 7, uh, English would be 8. So, we have to consider 12 people would be there totally in this thing. Already 3 is out, 3 is here. And uh, uh, if you consider the common, 3 people can read uh, both, both languages. So, then if you uh, do minus 7 minus 3, it would be 4, 8 minus 3, it would be 5. Number of people exactly read one language would be 4 plus 5, you add this, the answer would be 9. So, the correct answer would be option B. So, thank you guys, have a nice day.